Well, here's something few people know. Oklahoma's soil and climate is as conducive to growing grapes as the celebrated wine country of California. In fact, grapes are one of the fastest growing specialty crops in the state. And when you meet the people developing Oklahoma's wine industry, it's no wonder. For them, it's not a job, it's a passion, and one they're getting pretty good at. Well, Oklahoma grape growers are starting to reap the fruits of their labor. What was once a tiny niche industry has quickly become Oklahoma's fastest growing specialty crop, thanks in great part to the relaxation of Oklahoma liquor laws in the year 2000. State question 688 allowed uh, wineries to sell to restaurants and to, directly to liquor stores and that opened up a whole new market for wines outside of premises sales at the winery. So that just caused the whole industry to explode. Jill Stickler is a member of Oklahoma's Grape Growers and Winemakers Association, an industry group that now has close to 50 members made up primarily of small farmers. This was a cattle ranch. My folks always ran cattle forever, and they wanted to get out of the business, and they offered it to my wife and I, and we said, thanks, but no thanks. We've, we've helped on the weekends, and that's been enough fun, but we have another idea. How about let's try grapes? They said, go for it. Which is what Robert and Pam Harris did, giving cattle country a whole new look, complete with a tasting room. Thank you. If you like people and you like to share what you're doing with everybody, it's a great feel for people and hopefully it's going to be a really nice economic boost for Oklahoma. Which it has. All of Oklahoma wineries are small, mostly family-owned operations that provide jobs and attract tourists, as well as provide a market for locally grown grapes. Without grape growers, there is no wine industry. I mean, we can go to California and buy wine cheap and bring it back to Oklahoma but you can't put Oklahoma on a label. Chuck Dacious owns Canadian River Vineyard and Winery and says the future of Oklahoma's wine industry is with locally grown grapes. It's good for the industry of Oklahoma. It's a different uh, alternative agriculture than, than being a wheat farmer or a cattle raiser. And uh, there's more money in grapes than there are in wheat. And that does have some traditional farmers adding grapes into their crop mix. We have quite a few members in, in our organization who are wheat farmers that are just growing grapes as an alternative crop to wheat. Uh, they grow it in the areas of their um, field where the irrigation isn't, and it seems to be quite successful. We have a lot of those folks up around Enid, and we have quite a few of them over in southwest Oklahoma. Now, despite such interest in winemaking, we still drink relatively small amounts of wine here in the U.S. Annual per capita consumption in our country is just a fraction of Europe's. Over a year period, Americans will drink on average about two gallons of wine. But in France and Italy, it's seven times that. So grape growers and winemakers know there's still plenty of room to grow. We're really trying to develop like they have in Missouri, the wine trails, so that you can spend the day, go to the wineries, and uh, you know make it a really great outing and stay in Oklahoma. And neighboring states have proven such a formula works. Each September, over 200,000 people descend upon Grapevine, Texas for their annual Grape Fest, which is good not just for the wineries, but for the entire economy. Tourism, the amount of people that we bring into each of the wineries that we have here in the city, it's a big draw, not only the festivals that we have, which we have three during the year, but just every day. It's a drawing point, and they go to the wineries. Well, they eat here, they eat lunch, they eat suppers uh, many times, but they also uh, visit all the little shops as they're going, walking around to the different wineries. They're able to visit and go into the stores and purchase from them. And it's such shared success that growers like Stickler Hope can be recreated all across Oklahoma. The more people there are in wineries and, you know, they can go together and work together to make wine trails and interesting things for people to do when they're touring. And there are people who, who do nothing but tour wineries on their vacations. People enjoy seeing the crop, period. They'll come to, the, they'll come to a winery just to see the vineyards and see the grapes growing and they want to participate in the picking and it, it's just really kind of a fun thing to do. And while Oklahoma's grape and wine industry is still in its relative infancy, those that have nurtured it over the years say they can't wait.
to see it grow up. I'm like totally engrossed with this. I love grape growing. I love the people. I love the environment. I love the lifestyle. Uh, it is a fun thing to do. It's hard work, but I've never met nicer people. If you enjoy some, seeing something go from a little stick in the ground to having bunches of grapes on it, uh, that you cut off and you bring someplace and you crush them up into some juice and then you finally after about three years and ten months you get a bottle of wine that is made from grapes that you produced you have no idea how rewarding that is <laughs>